I'm Emilio Pasmino, and this is The Lesser Siren. Here in this tank is a creature I've wanted to show you guys for very long. However, the problem is that he is super slippery. So I'm going to try to hold him for only a bit, but the rest of the episode he's going to be in the tank. So let me see if I can just get him out of the water. So you might see him a little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's going back down. So you saw that right there? This is not a snake, it's not a worm, and it's not an eel. This is actually an amphibian called the Lesser Siren. And if you look real closely in the front, let me see if I can get him back up. Just really quickly. Yeah, he's very hard to get a hold of. So if you look at him here, you can see that he actually has little front feet. And each of the toes on its feet has claws, something not very common in amphibians. However, it only has them in the front. It does not have back legs. Instead, it has this powerful rudder-like tail that it uses to propel itself through the water. So what are the feet for? Well, this guy can actually live on both land and water. But when it's on land, it has to be kept moist constantly. So it has the tail that lets it swim, but also the little front hands that let it walk. And there is another amazing adaptation that this creature has to be able to live on land and water. So you see right here these kind of little hairs that it has on the side of its neck. Those are actually gills. It allows it to breathe underwater. But this salamander can also breathe air because it has lungs. So it's able to breathe air and water. Because I caught this guy last night, he's been in this tank for a while and he pooped. And this gives us an idea of what exactly it eats. And if you look in here, you can see that the water is filled with these tiny little snail shells. So this tells us that the lesser siren in this lake is eating primarily snails, or these very tiny ones. And right now I'm going to change the water because first it smells pretty bad, and second it's become very turbid since I put him in here and he pooped. So I want you guys to get a better look at him, so I'm going to change the water, put him in clearer water, and then I'll continue presenting him. Sirens are what is known as an indicator species, which means that their presence, or lack thereof, can be used to measure the health of an ecosystem. This is because, like all amphibians, they absorb gases and water through their skin, and with it, all the chemicals and substances that are dissolved in the water. This makes them extremely sensitive to any change in water quality, such as pollution, salinity, temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen levels, etc. So because there are sirens living in this lake, it's a good sign that the ecosystem hasn't been altered too much by human activities. So here's the perfect opportunity to show you guys, if you look in real close, on my middle finger you can see the feet, it's hanging on to my hand, and if you look really really closely you can see these tiny little claws. It's very rare for an amphibian to actually have claws. And then if you look around here in the head, you can see that the eyes are very tiny, They're almost used, oh it just gulped, you see it's breathing air. And then right near the front of the snout are these two little nostrils. Now over here, you can see the gills. However, they're folded inwards because when it's out of the water, it doesn't need to use them. It only uses them when it's in the water. Outside, it breathes with its lungs. So I'm going to put them down real quick so you guys can see how it's going to open up the gills the moment it hits the water. So put them down and boom, look at the gills opening up right there. One of the reasons I'm so excited to show you this amazing creature is that this is the first time I've actually held one in my hands, and only the second time I've ever seen one. The first interaction, so to speak, was last summer when I filmed a great blue heron eating one from very far away, and it seemed to struggle at first, but then the heron swallowed it whole before I could get any closer. Before that, I had no idea they even lived here, and until yesterday night, I hadn't seen another one. So you can imagine how incredibly happy it was to find this one resting on a shallow mud bank. Although we've established that they are amphibians and not fish, they remind me a lot of the violet goby I caught back in Ecuador. Apart from the fact that they both spend most of their time burrowing in mud and are rarely seen by people, both of these creatures are extremely slippery and if they decide to move it's impossible to hold on to them.
I'm Emilio Pasmino, and this is the Violet Gobi. I'm Emilio Pasmino, and this is the Lustre Sight. <laughs> like I mentioned before, these guys need to be kept constantly moist even when they're on land. That's why I keep washing my hands every time I put them back. However, there are periods th throughout its range in which there is a lot of droughts. So to survive, what it does is that it encloses itself in a layer of sort of mucus and mud and it forms this kind of cocoon that it uses to hibernate until the water arrives. According to some scientists, sirens can survive for many months or perhaps even years in this state without having to eat or drink at all, which is a testament to their extraordinary adaptability. There is another species of siren that lives in Florida called the reticulated siren. Those sirens have a characteristic spotted pattern on their back. However, they are extremely rare, having only been discovered in 1970, and since then having been seen only in a few very specific locations in Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. The reason these guys are called sirens is because they have the two front limbs, and then in the back, instead of having two more limbs, they have the powerful tail, which makes it look kind of like a mermaid. However, I think there's another reason that they're named sirens. And that's because, unlike most species of salamanders, these guys can actually vocalize. When they meet other members of their species, they're going to do these fast little clicks. But when they're in danger or they feel stressed, they're going to actually make like a screaming sound. Luckily, I haven't heard a peep from this guy. So I think that means he's not, he doesn't feel in too much danger with me. He feels kind of relaxed. So as long as we don't hear him scream, I think I can hold him like this. Regardless of the fact that it's not making any noise, I don't want to keep him with me for too long and I would love to release this elusive creature back out into its habitat. Bueno muchachos, till next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out on any new adventures by clicking the channel icon right above or click here to watch another video. And as always, thanks for watching. You gonna get out? No!